Hey, and welcome back to another 3D how-to video in Blender. Today we're going to create a wooden treasure chest that's going to contain potions, items, weapons, and all sorts of stuff in our video game. So go ahead and open up Blender and we'll jump right in. So we're just going to start by manipulating the cube that it gives us when we open a new Blender session. So let's go ahead and do that. We're just going to bring this up a little bit and we're going to hop right into edit mode. So a chest is normally a lot longer than just a regular cube, so let's just go ahead and make sure the face select is selected. We're going to grab this right face right here, and we're just going to pull it out this way. There we go. So to make this an empty vessel, kind of like the coin pouch that we created, we're going to use a solidify modifier. That's basically going to turn this solid model into an empty open face box. So first we're going to start by deleting the top face. So with face select selected, click on the top face and hit delete, and we're just going to delete the top face. So to create the solidify modifier, we're going to go to the right hand side and click the wrench tab right under your... Uh, right under your model outline, click add modifier, and we want to add the solidify. So it already adds a little bit of a wall thickness for you, but we're going to go ahead and change that over here right under the apply button. So let's make that 0.1, see what that looks like. That looks pretty good, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So hit apply. So you can actually add uh, these different modifiers in edit mode. So just go ahead and jump in object mode, and then you can hit apply. There we go. So right now this part of the treasure chest is done, so let's go ahead and add a lid, and that's going to be really simple. Let's just go ahead and add, and we're actually going to add a, another cube. Okay, we're going to move that right above this one. And once that's in place, we're just going to go ahead and hop into edit mode. And we're just going to go ahead and lengthen this face so it matches the rest of the treasure chest. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's move the top face down a little bit. There we go. And so now what we're going to do is just add a series of loop cuts to this uh, this lid so that we can make it kind of a curved surface instead of a, just another box like here. Right now it kind of looks like a Minecraft treasure chest, but we want it to have a curved top. So we're going to do that by adding some loop cuts, which you can find right on the left hand side on the tool shelf. If I expand this a little bit, you can see it says loop cut and slide. And we're going to go ahead and add those loop cuts along the depth of the um, the top of the, the treasure chest. So we want to add, let's say four. We're going to put them right in the center. And now let's just start scaling those edges down so that they create a curved uh, profile. So if we take a side view here, I'm just going to go ahead and change my view to orthographic so I can get a, a very face on view of the side. There we go. And let's see if we click right. No, that's the front. Maybe front. There we go. That looks better. So first, let's start by scaling the edges down uh, along the front and the back of the chest lid. So let's select both of those, and to do that, you can hold down Shift and use the right mouse button to select those edges, making sure that Edge Select is selected at the bottom here. And we're just going to go ahead and move those down. And we'll move them down to about right there. Okay, let's do the same thing with the next ones, uh, going moving towards the center of the lid. Hold down Shift and select those, and we're going to move those down a little bit. Okay, and let's do the same thing here. And just move those down a little bit. How does that look? That looks pretty good. That kind of matches the low poly look that we're going for with the rest of the series. Okay, so let's go ahead and make that a shell just like we did with the bottom of the chest. So I'm actually going to hide this first cube just so we can see the bottom side of the lid. And while we're up in the outline or the design tree of these models, let's go ahead and rename this chest and name this one chest lid. There we go. So let's hide chest for right now. So you can see if we look at it from the bottom, let's go ahead into edit mode, and we're going to start by deleting all of these bottom faces here. So hold down shift, and I'm just going to select all of these faces. I'm going to hit delete, and we're going to delete the faces. Okay. Now right after that, let's go ahead and add the solidify modifier. Under the modifier tab, we'll click add modifier and solidify, and we're going to make this 0.1 just like we did with the chest. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and show the chest again. There we go. Let's go ahead and move the lid down so that it matches the, uh, the chest a little bit better. So with that selected, let's just go ahead and move that down. There we go. 
So with both of these created, I kind of want to add some more support along the edges of this uh, chest. So if you look at like a pirate chest or a chest from any RPG game, sometimes they'll have either metal or thicker wooden uh, rails going along the edges. And I'm and I'm, I'm guessing that's just to add support and to add strength to the box. We're going to go ahead and add that detail to our box. So first we'll start with the chest. With that selected, go into edit mode. And we're going to create these supports by insetting these faces. So with face select selected, click on the front face. We're going to click I for inset. And we're going to inset it, let's say, 0.1. There we go. And let's go ahead and do that with all of the faces of the box. So now that we have all those inset faces created, what we're going to do now is extrude the faces that aren't the inset faces inwards so that there is a, uh, a depth difference between the edges and the main face of the chest. So if we select the, the front of the chest here, we can go ahead and click E on the keyboard and we can see that it's already moving in the X direction. And what we're gonna do is type in 0 0.05, and you'll see that it actually starts extruding it away from the chest, so all we have to do is backspace and type in negative 0 0.05, and you'll see that it gives it a depth difference. So go ahead and do that with the rest of the faces on the treasure chest. Okay, with that done, let's go ahead and do that same bit of detail to the lid. So let's go into object mode, select the lid, go into edit mode, and let's inset all of the faces around the treasure chest lid. So to do that, let's just select all of these faces along this side, hit I on the keyboard, and to be consistent, we're gonna type in um, 0.1. There we go. Now let's do that for the top of the lid, it's the same thing. Let's select all of these faces. And with all of those faces selected, we can click I on the keyboard, type in 0 0.01, or 0 0.1 rather. There we go, 0 0.1. There we go. And let's go ahead and do that with the last face. Okay, so now with those inset faces created, let's go ahead and make the lid in a different style than the rest of the box. I know that might look a little weird, but I just want to show you the different styles that you could do and the different options that you have. So what we're going to do here is, instead of extruding it, creating a sharp walled edge along the difference in depth between the main face and the, uh, the edge here, the supports of the chest, we're actually going to move the faces instead of extruding them. Now with extruding a face, it creates a whole other face in between the main face and the face that you extruded. With moving the face, it doesn't create any new faces. It maintains that shared edge between the two faces that are uh, moving relative to one another. So let's go ahead and do that and see how that looks. First, let's start with the sides of the lid. Let's select each of these faces. Okay, go to translate, and we wanna move it just in the Y direction. And so we're gonna move that just 0 0.05. How does that look? Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's do that with the other side. We're gonna go up to, under transform, we're gonna click translate. We wanna make it so it's just moving in the Y direction. So type in negative 0.05 so that it doesn't move away from the chest. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now let's move the faces on the top of the lid. So instead of using the translate tool like we did with the sides of the lid, we're going to use the scale tool. So go ahead and select all of the faces on the top of the box lid. And we're going to go ahead and click S. And now would be a kind of good time to talk about the origin. When you're scaling, it actually scales toward or around the origin that is set for whatever you're uh, manipulating. Right now, the origin is set to where this is scaling towards. We want to make this so that it's basically the center of the box lid because that's what we want to scale around. So click Escape. And a really simple way to make sure that the origin is set to the center of mass of the object that you're manipulating, go into Object Mode and make sure that Set Origin is set to the center of mass. So that's step one. The next thing to do is in Edit Mode, Click Shift S, which will bring up the snap feature, and click on cursor to selected. 
So that'll move the origin towards the center of mass that you designated for the object that you're manipulating. So that's just one way to make sure that if you're scaling and something is going wrong, this is a great way to check and make sure that your origin is set to the center of mass or whatever you want to scale around. So now that that is all in order, let's go ahead and click S and we want to type in 0.95 because we are basically making the top lid 95% of the size of it of what it would be originally. So click enter. And there we go, we're done with the top of our lid. If you want, definitely go ahead and make the rest of the chest the same style as the lid. It's completely up to you. I just wanted to present both options to you in case you wanted to do one or the other. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is create a latching mechanism for our chest. Let's start by going into object mode and go to add, and we're just going to go ahead and add a cube. Okay. So let's go ahead right into edit mode, and we're just going to go ahead and shrink that down a bit. Make sure the whole thing is selected. Okay. Click S on the keyboard. Okay. And put it roughly into position. We're going to select this face. We're going to move that in a little bit. And then we're just going to go ahead and move these in a little bit. Okay, so that's the main part of our chest latch. So now we want to put a hole in the middle that a loop can go through that the lock can attach to. So we're going to make that hole using a Boolean modifier, which is essentially adding an object to the model that will serve as the outline of the hole that you're creating, and you're basically subtracting that object from the other one, creating a hole. So let's go ahead into object mode. Let's go to add, and this will be a uh, rectangular hole, so let's add a cube. Shrink that down a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead into edit mode. And let's just move that in the general area. Okay, now let's move the faces around so that it's the right shape and size that we want. Okay, that's pretty good. So the modifier there we're gonna use is the Boolean modifier. And there's a lot of ways to make holes in Blender, but this is the way that I prefer because it gives me a little bit more control over the shape of the hole that I want. Essentially, a Boolean modifier subtracts one object from another. So let's go ahead and see how that's done. In object mode, make sure that you're selecting the object that you wanna subtract the uh, other object from. So we want, uh, we want the object that we're going to be subtracting from to be the latch. Let's make sure that we rename that so we know what we're clicking on. So we have latch and latch hole. Okay, that's good. Go over to the wrench tab, which is the modifying tab, and under add modifier, click on boolean. And under object, we want to select the latch hole. So there's a lot of different uh, ways to uh, use this modifier. Right now, what it's doing is deleting everything that isn't directly uh, attached to the the uh, latch hole object, we want it to be difference, which is basically the opposite. It's going to be deleting everything that is in contact uh, with the latch hole object. So go ahead and hit apply. And now we can just delete the latch hole from the project and you'll see that the hole is left there. So if we hide the lid and the chest, you'll see that the hole is created, but it doesn't create new edges or faces like the uh, extrude uh, tool does. So let's go ahead and address this so we don't have basically an empty object here. So this is really simple. Just go ahead, click on latch. So in edit mode, making sure that vertices select is selected, go ahead and shift click all of the vertices that would essentially make up the four corners of the face that you want to create. So once that is done, you can see that all these vertices are are uh, created. So go ahead and click F on the keyboard and that'll create a face that will that is made up of those four corners. So go ahead and do that with all four sides of the inside of this hole. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and, and show the rest of our uh, model here. Okay, so in addition to the latch, we want to create a ring that the lock will basically hang off of and stop the lid from opening. So that's going to be really simple. We're just going to add a torus. 
So to do that, let's go ahead to object mode and we're gonna click add, mesh, and torus. There we go. We want 12 by 12, so that looks pretty good. And let's rotate it so that it is in position. We want it to be around the X axis. That looks pretty good. We're gonna type in 90 to rotate it 90 degrees. And let's hit scale to scale that down a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and move that into position. So the last thing that we want to do is create the lock, which is actually going to be kind of a combination of creating the latch and creating the uh, latch ring there. It's basically just going to be creating a cube, putting in some loop cuts, and then adding a torus shape to it so that it has the loop that's going to be in contact with the ring and that would unlock and lock. All right, with our lock done, let's just go ahead and add some color to our design. Okay, so there we have it. I'm sorry if you wanted to see the coloring process, but in all my other videos, I walk through how you can add color to different objects in Blender. There are so many components to this with different colors, I didn't want to have to stop every single time and color it along the way. So again, if you wanna see how to color in Blender, just go ahead and watch one of my other videos. So if you weren't following along, go ahead and give this one a try. There are tons of customizable parts of this chest, like the lock or the shape of the chest or something like that. So go ahead and make it your own. And when you do, make sure you tweet me a picture of your final model. If you have any questions about what you saw in this video or have any suggestions for future videos, make sure you go ahead and leave a comment down below. Also, if you got something from this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. All right, I'll see you in the next one.